throwing money fast on this side. I think I'm big meat. What up, what up, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mordai J and we are locked in. We've seen a different side of Pastor Swift. I think we may have seen Mr. Swift in episode 7 because we always wonder, is he crooked? Is he dirty? What is he up to? Where did he come from? Because he's given the word to everybody, but something doesn't seem right. And this week we've seen him hold it down for his whole congregation and he wasn't about to let Lamar and a dead dog come in there and stop what he got to say because the word is that powerful now before we jump into this and we talk a little bit about pastor swift if you like bmf content hit your like button hit your subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload make sure you follow me on instagram right here now pastor swift he did exactly what he was supposed to do but if you listen to everything he's been telling meach and terry along with charles even mabel then we understand he came from a troubled past and now here he is helping people out because this is what the Lord put him on this earth for. We've all been watching the same show. We know Meech and Terry, they're living life in the fast lane. They're moving work. They're just trying to find a way to make it out of Detroit and have the finer things in life. Now, we also know that this episode, they're trying to meet up with Cena and get right. But we start off with a funeral. And who's overseeing this funeral is Saki's funeral. And of course, Pastor Swift is there. Now he brings the young men, Meech and Terry along, and he's asking them, do you guys really care about Saki? And of course, Meech and Terry, they're gonna say yes, because this is their homeboy. This is one of their friends that were down with being met. But what Pastor Swift is trying to say is, listen to me, young brother. I've been there before, maybe not on the scale you guys are on, but I know what it feels like to lose people. And if you're still in the streets doing the same thing, are you really changing yourself for the better? Now, Meech and Terry, they're listening to it and they're thinking, you know, he might be right. But at the same time, it's that hunger for more, that, that make a dollar out of 15 cents, that drive that Meech has. He needs the game. For some reason, he can't shake the game. He knows that he can make a good living off the game. But Pastor Swift wants them to know that if you keep going down this alley, not only is Saki in there, it could be one of you two. Now, we're looking at Pastor Swift thinking, okay, he's right about this. But what do we see right after that? Meech and Terry talk about going to meet Cena. And this is exactly what Pastor Swift was trying to say. If you really care for Saki, if you really wanted to change, then you would leave all of this nonsense alone. So for us, we're just looking at Pastor Swift as giving us the word. But as we come to find out, he's actually listened to everything that's going on. And he's lived this. So he can apply his life experiences to tell these young men about the path that they're going down. On the other side of the streets, we know that the police are having their issues also. There's two bricks that are missing and they need to figure out a way to replace them too. And of course, all of this is to bring down Meech. So where does Detective Bryant go? Right after he finds out he needs to return two bricks, he goes down to the church, disrupts everything. But guess who's there to stop it? Who's gonna intervene in all of this? None other than Pastor Swift, because not only does he know the streets aspects, he's probably dealt with cops. You know cops are always harassing people, especially Pastor Swift, AKA Mr. Swift when he was in the streets. Now when they get there, there's no lesser of two evils. We know the cops aren't playing fair. We know Meech and them are in the streets, so they are not playing fair. This is just the game. Cops and robbers, this is how it happens. But Pastor Swift is telling Detective Bryant, brother, this is not the place to do all of this. Now, you see Detective Bryant kind of back down. So that gave us indication that either he knows something about Pastor Swift or he's just being respectful in here. But we know it's not about being respectful. He has some respect for Pastor Swift, but that's why he disrespected the little the little bowl with the drink in it, put his cigarette in there. And Pastor Swift tells them both straight up, I'm not here on either side to defend what either one of you do. Pastor Swift tells them, I'm here to pray over both of you, make sure that both of you have your blessings. Because that's one thing about Pastor Swift. He may not agree with what you're doing, but he hears what you're doing, he sees what you're doing, and he's still trying to lead both parties down the right path. So he steps in, intervenes, he separates these two and has them go their separate ways. Now, we're looking at Pastor Swift like, okay, he's a stand-up guy, but it looks like he has respect around these streets of Detroit. So that's a good thing in Pastor Swift's favor. And later on in the episode, we find out that he's not backing down from anybody because not only does he have the blessing from the Lord, he also has a blessing of that stainless steel. And while he's giving his sermon, everyone's listening because they have respect for him and they know when he's up here talking, he's telling it like it is. Now, 
He did give sound advice to Lucille in her marriage and also to Charles. So not only is he working with the boys, he's working with the parents. This is the same weekend that Lucille got up and was telling everybody that my boys, they're good. They came from a good household. They're just a product of the environment. And everybody was storming out. Now you see, Pastor, he didn't back down. He stood with Lucille and he understood where she was coming from. But then we get an interaction from the dangerous person in Detroit. And that person right now is none other than Lamar. And he comes in with his dog. We all know what Lamar is doing. Lucille even says he's a bad man. So when he comes in here, any other church, they would have been afraid. They would have let Lamar come in here and ruin Sunday service, but not up in Pastor Swift's house. You come in here, you need to be respectful. That dog, we can't do nothing about it. But if you want to get right within, you come on in here. But don't be bringing all that evil up in this house. And you see the brothers on the, the deacons. Yeah, they stood up. What did they do? They followed Pastor Swift's lead. And what does Pastor Swift tell us when he stands up to Lamar, looks him in the face? He pulls a gun out and tells him, nigga, you need to leave. I'm not repeating myself. I got this thing on me. I told you, you bring this evil in this house, I'm going to go ahead and exterminate it. Now, is that the right thing to do? No. But Pastor Swift just said, don't make me turn back into Eastside Swift. That's what we used to call him back in the day, Eastside Swift. So Pastor Swift was in the streets and Lamar even backed down, not only because he seen the gun, not just because he seen the deacons, but we all heard about Eastside Swift. So we know that Pastor Swift was actually out in these streets and he's a bad man to be messed with. And one thing we know about him, he ain't backing down. If there's a challenge, he's going to look the challenge in the eye and he's going to take it on. Pastor Swift, Eastside Swift, whatever you want to call him, he's the real deal. That's a little background on our boy Pastor Swift and how he was moving out in these streets. All right, let me know what you think about Pastor Swift. Were you thinking that Eastside Swift had it in him? Did you think that he was going to have a gun on him? Well, it looks like he's making sure that Detroit, at least inside the church, is protected from all evils. Let me know what you think about Eastside Swift. Would you go to Eastside Swift Sunday service? Let me know. I'm Odi J. If you like this content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.